it happened again. Remember the look for Jay-Z or David vulnerability in December 2021? This time, it's different. The complexity, the sophistication, it's an ingenious cybersecurity chess game. It leveraged not just extensive knowledge of the SSH supply chain, XD, LibLzima, SystemD, and SSH, and various internal areas of the operating system, but also social engineering tactics. Yet, unlike the earliest social engineering cases we've seen with the legendary hacker Kevin Mitnick, which took sometimes just a few minutes or less to get access to the target data or systems, the XE backdoor went through three-year preparation phase. So let's delve into the story and check how the stage was set, where the danger lies, and what lessons we can take away from it. It all started subtly in 2021, with a GitHub account under the name GAT75 and an innocuous pull request in the LibArchive library, the goal to improve an error message. But there was more to it, much more. It wasn't just about polishing text, the real play was replacing the safe fprintrf function with a less secure one, fprintf. And just like that, with the pull request approved, Giatan, the user behind GAT75, with no prior online footprint, entered the stage. In the following year, 2022, Giatan proposed a patch to the open source project XZ. XZ wasn't just any tool. It's a backbone for compressing critical system files across countless Linux servers worldwide. Using the LZMA, or Lempel Save Markov Chain Algorithm, compression algorithm. Instead of a public pull request, Tan chooses a mailing list, a path less scrutinized, where the patch quietly gains traction. Here the plot thickens when two figures, Jiga Kumar and Dennis Ans, appear out of nowhere. They urged for a rapid adoption of Tan's patches into the XZ's code base. Once their mission is accomplished, they vanish without leaving a digital trace. Meanwhile, the sole developer of XZ, Las Colin, who was already struggling with the burden of maintaining XZ in his spare time and mental health issues, yielded to the pressure and accepted the patch. As Giatan became a regular contributor to XZ, they were officially named the co-maintainer in 2022, with corresponding permissions. However, Las Colin didn't know that he was falling victim to an extensive social engineering attack. From this position, Giatan starts pulling the strings. On December 30, 2022, they merged a batch of commits directly into the XC repository. On March 18, 2023, they tagged and built their first XZ release, version 50402. In the same month, March 2023, the contact address for XZ at the Open Source Security Scanner, OSS FAS, was changed to Giatan. This was a pivotal move. Security notifications for XZ started going primarily to them, with Las Colin merely as CC. This change proved significant a few months later, when a new person, Hans Jensen, appeared on the scene. Hans Jensen suggested the method to calculate checksums faster by allowing the algorithm used to be swapped out at runtime, a concept similar to a plugin system. After this suggestion, Hans Jensen disappeared from the scene but would later play another role. Giatan initially agreed to the change and promptly received the security warning from OSS FAS. The warning was justified as the proposed change would allow code to be swapped out post-deployment, a practice usually avoided. However, Giatan approached OSS FAS claiming that the change was legitimate and the warning therefore unfounded. OSS FAS ultimately agreed with this assessment, thus theoretically enabling code to be manipulated at runtime in XZ. We hit 2024 and Tan's groundwork payoff. After three years of careful planning, they submitted the pull request to XZ for what seemed like harmless test files. But here's what it gets real. The test files were two binaries whose content weren't immediately apparent. However, in reality, they contain scripts and executable code. When the tests run, 
They unpack and execute a series of complex commands leading to manipulation of the XZ bill. From this point on, compromised versions of XZ exist. On March 25, 2024, Hans Janssen reappeared and advocated for the Debian project to switch to the new and thus compromised version of XZ. The Debian project did indeed proceed with an upgrade initially only as a pre-release version, but Hans Janssen was successful in his efforts. The compromised version of XZ infiltrated other Linux distributions as well, such as Kali Linux, Arch Linux, and Fedora, after they implemented the upgrade. Some distributions, including Ubuntu, decided against the upgrade and delayed their decision. The pre-release version of Debian then found its way to Andres Freund, an employee at Microsoft involved in development PostgreSQL. He wanted to test some of his changes to PostgreSQL and therefore opted for the latest version of Debian. During the test, he noticed something fishy. Logging via SSH took unusually long, about three quarters of a second instead of the usual quarter second. SSH is a vital tool for the safe operation of a networked world. Anything that undermines it is really bad news. He also noticed failing SSH logins using a substantial amount of CPU. Front became suspicious and started to investigate further. His search took him deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. It turned out that the XZ utils had a backdoor that could potentially allow remote code execution on vulnerable Linux systems. This backdoor was cleverly disguised as a feature to bypass SSH authentication, but it was actually a lot more dangerous. The code behind this backdoor is known as CVE 2024-3094, base score 10 critical. Eventually, on March 29, 2024, Andres Freund went public with his finding. A narrow escape from a major cyber attack. The threat is only indirectly related to XZ. XZ plays an essential role in Linux. It's commonly used to compress the kernel, the init ramps, and also RPM and DEB packages. Thus, XZ is already significant early in the system startup process. Many Linux distributions now use systemd as the init process which often also serves to start the SSH service. However, most distributions do not offer the official version of OpenSSH, but rather their own modified variant with additional features. The integration of SSH with systemd is one such typical extension. The attack leverages this setup. When systemd starts, it loads XZ, and XZ modifies the function for authenticating SSH keys before SSH itself is started. The trick here is that there is an exception for attackers in possession of a specific private SSH key. They would be able to execute remote commands, upload and execute code on the backdoor device, which could potentially be used to gain administrative or root access to millions of Linux servers worldwide. It's a no-bus, nobody but us attack. In other words, it could be exploited only by the attackers setting the stage for potentially more exploits. It was what is called the supply chain attack, where malicious software is not directly injected into target machines, but distributed by infecting the regular software updates to which all computer users are rarely accustomed. As John Norton stated it on The Guardian, this incident is a reflection on the broader challenges facing us. As software engineers and architects, there are some lessons that we need to take away from this security breach. Acknowledge software dependencies. When architecting software, remember that it doesn't operate in isolation. It will interact and depend on other software and open source projects. These dependencies can be potential vulnerabilities if one of them gets compromised. You need to have a plan to quickly respond to security breaches in your software's ecosystem. Secure integration practices. Any manipulations at an integration point of software with other systems can lead to widespread security vulnerabilities. Ensure that these points are secure and regularly audited. Automated security checks. 
implement automated tools to regularly scan for vulnerabilities in the code base and dependencies. A tool like OSS Fuzz tests software to find flaws early by executing the code. SBOM or Software Bill of Materials tools can track vulnerabilities, licensing, and compliance issue associated with your software dependencies. Thorough code review. When reviewing pull requests, don't just focus on the source code. It's crucial to rigorously review the test code and associated files as well. Attackers can hide malicious code in places less scrutinized, which might seem benign, but can lead to significant vulnerabilities. Enhanced scrutiny of contributions. When reviewing contributions, especially from new or unknown contributors, apply an extra layer of scrutiny. Educate and train. Regular training sessions on the latest security practices and potential attack vectors empower developers to recognize and mitigate risks proactively. Final thought. On the shadows of the vast and open landscape of the internet, we narrowly averted a digital disaster. A disaster that could have been the most devastating in internet history. However, this incident isn't just a technical glitch. It reflects a social and cultural problem that affects various levels. The blind trust in open source and the carefree integration of external dependencies in our projects, the ongoing sustainability problems in the open source world, the undermine of the value of open source developers' time and well-being. The situation of Las Colon isn't an exception. It's typical for many developers of widely used open source libraries like Log4j that contribute significantly to critical infrastructure without serious concern for their financial or mental health. Open source projects have a dark underbelly of a lack of oversight, which makes them easy targets for manipulation. So the question is, what might actually be happening unnoticed and without us being aware of it? This story isn't just a cautionary tale, it's a wake-up call to the community. Let's learn from the past and secure our future. Join the conversation and share your thoughts in the comment section. I'm all ears. Excited about diving deeper into the world of software architecture? This video is just the beginning. Check out my Udemy video course on software architecture, where I explore these concepts further and dive into real-world challenges. The link to the course is in the video description below. And here is a bonus. Subscribe to my newsletter and you will get free access to all my courses. I cross my fingers to all of you and wish that your journey with software architecture will be a perpetual odyssey and that you embrace every challenge as an opportunity to learn, adapt, and innovate. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more updates and tech insights. See you next time.